Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today I have another Friday Vlogs for you. Friday Vlogs? Friday Sews Vlog for you, where I will be going through everything I have been up to the past two weeks now, I believe. It's the middle of September, so I have actually made um, quite a few items. Well, I wouldn't say quite a few. Um, three items plus an upcycle and I'm also going to share a small um fabric haul for you um and other sort of um sort of life life bits as well um thank you so much if you are a returning um viewer if it is your first time here then please kindly consider liking and subscribing every thumbs up means a lot and it also gets um youtube then um i don't not sure how the algorithm works but presumably the more likes you get youtube then sort of um do something special in their algorithm that then allows other people to see my videos which is really really great thank you so much for all my subscribers so far I think I'm past the 1500 mark, maybe even past the 1600 mark as I speak. So thank you, thank you so much. First and foremost, what I'm wearing. This is one of my makes already as well. It's actually, it wasn't in my plans. It is an upcycle. So this is the, um, I don't have the pattern. This is the Anthea Allen, the Anna Allen Anthea blouse in a beige um, linen. The linen is from Jenny Stitches Fabrics. And I will just pop up a picture of the pattern up here. So basically, I originally made this as a blouse. I'll try and pop up a picture of what it used to look like as a blouse. Um, and although I loved it, I loved the sleeves, I loved the neckline. I absolutely loved making this blouse. The instructions were just really, really good. And all the pieces fitted perfectly. Even like, so this is all um, bias, bi is it bias binding? Um... No, it's not bias binding, but it's all, the neckline must be bias binding. Yeah, the neckline is bias bound. Um, and but just everything just kind of folded together beautifully, pressed together beautifully. When it says fold over by a quarter of an inch, it just met perfectly. Even the little, um, what are these called? Um, sleeve cuffs all went together beautifully. It was such a lovely sew, especially, I suppose, because it's a linen as well. It was lovely to press, easy to sew. So fabric is from Jenny Stitches fabric. So I made it as a blouse. I believe it was like April, May, but I never really wore it. I just wore it for photographs. And I, I think maybe because I'm at this stage now in my sewing journey where I, <laughs> I prefer to wear all me made items and I just didn't have any me made bottoms to go with the blouse. And so I just, I never wore it. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to turn it into a dress. So all I did was I can show you, I'm gonna step up here. So it's fairly loose, I just cut it off and I added a gathered skirt, the same width as the fabric, um, by about 80 centimeters long. And then I added pockets from Tilly and the Buttons. I love Tilly and the Buttons pockets and their instructions. I follow them with most of my makes and it's a really, really flowy, almost like a buffet dress. I love the puffed sleeves with the um, gathers. I love sort of the gathering here. I love everything about it. So now that it's a dress, I wear it more often. And um, well, I say that I've only wore it, <laughs> worn it once. Um, it was my 41st birthday on Tuesday. It's Thursday today. So I wore this out to dinner with my husband. We went to our local Indian restaurant. I'll pop up some photos. Um, that's my lovely husband and I. Um, and I do style it with a belt because I think, I mean, do you know what? I actually quite like the low, the flowy style. I think it's actually really pretty. And although it doesn't give me any shape, I really, really like it. And I think it's very freeing. I don't have to suck in. It's just a really, really nice flowy dress. But I do wear it with a belt sometimes as well. And when I say sometimes, as you know, I've only worn it once. So the first time I wore it, I wore it with a belt. And um, during dinner, I took the belt off. <laughs> And I went home with the dress looking totally different um, as a flowy dress. So um, there you go. Um, also, where I cut it off, I'll show you. Where I cut it off, it wasn't intentional. But this, as you can see, it's going down as a curve. Um, so that bit is higher than that bit. And actually, it looks really nice like that. I wonder when I make another one whether I can copy that, that curve. Because I think it looks quite different and unique and it wasn't intentional but that's what happened um so that's my first make or upcycle of the month 
Um, and this fabric, as I say, was Jenny Stitches, but then I only bought two meters for the blouse. And then I was trying to buy another two meters or a meter and a half to for the skirt. But Jenny was out of this fabric. And then I found it in uh, Pound Fabrics and I was thinking, will the colour be the same? I'm not sure. So I, I went ahead and bought it anyway and it was the same colour, same fabric and everything. So very, very happy with that. So that's an easy make and also sort of a palette cleanser where I've been busy with the children going back to school. Um, I just wanted something that was quick and easy and adding a gathered skirt and pockets with the instructions from Tilly and the Buttons was a really, really good... Um, um, way to palette cleanse in that sense and I did it all in one evening and I was very very happy with it um so that's my first one the second thing that I made is the um Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress I've made two and they're both in Liberty fabrics I've just realized right pattern let me get out the pattern haha -ha. Tilly and the Buttons Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. It's a smock dress or top. Um, and let me show you the line drawings. There you go. So this has kind of got like a curve as well. Can you see this curve here? So they have that intentionally. The dress I'm wearing now had that by accident. But there you go. Smock dress with bust darts. Uh, no fixings or zips. So you pull it over your head. So the neckline has to be slightly bigger than, say, if you wanted like a like a neckline like this. That would never. You could never get that on without buttons or fastenings. And then you have like the frills at the sleeves if you want. And you have like uh, a shorter peplum with a high low hem for a top. And then the longer sort of gathered skirt for the dress. I've also got the expansion kit, so that provides you with the frill for the bottom of the dress. And also different sleeve variations, a short sleeve, a puff sleeve and a long sleeve with an elasticated cuff. I have decided to use the Stylark Bell sleeve, which I have mentioned before. And I like that because it's three quarter length and it's elasticated as well. And it's quite puffy and billowy. I quite like these puffy sleeves. So I'm very in. I'm very liking, very much liking the puffy sleeves that are fashionable at the moment. Um, and I will show you them. Let me just get my project book as well so I can show you my um, notes. Little project book, again, recommended by Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl. So, what are we doing? Hello. Indigo dress, right. And for those of you that do follow me, I have made a couple of indigos before, so some of this might be quite repetitive, but I will just show you my versions. So the first version I made, well, not the first, the first version I made this month, is in the beautiful gold. I mean, look at that from far away, from up close. Absolutely gorgeous. Liberty Fabrics, their Tana Cotton Lawn in their Poppy and Poppy and Daisy. Yep, Poppy and Daisy print. And the drape of that fabric. Beautiful, lovely to work with, beautiful to press. And I just love it. Look at that. So, um, I love the um, indigo pattern because, again, everything fits perfectly. I've got a little um, label there for the facing. Sewing is my superpower. And I've added ties. Um, and I really, really love this dress. Um, the only reservation I do have now, because I have made... One, two, this is my third one, although my first for September, my third overall, is I'll pop up a picture of me wearing it. I'm not sure if the waist needs to be lowered a bit, so if the bodice needs to be lengthened by just an inch, because I'm finding it's kind of a bit too high, almost empire line on me, or maybe because I have got a bit of a mum tum, that it kind of looks, my tummy is pushing up the waist a bit higher. I don't know whether I should. What do you guys think? I don't know, looking at the photos, do you think I need to lengthen the waist that lengthen the bodice by an inch so that the waist is slightly lower on me i'm not sure either way i really really love this i have worn this a couple of times now and i've had so many compliments from it uh, we went to london on the weekend not this weekend gone but the weekend before and i wore this dress and all my old friends from london were complimenting it so much even so even more so you know they were asking if i did commissions and stuff and I have been asked actually by friends whether I could sew for them 
or even sell some of my makes that I've made. Um, and I have been thinking about it because I've had four or five requests now. And as much as I love sewing, I have so many dresses. I can't wear them all because, I mean, I can't wear this like every day. Um, so my casual dresses I wear every day, which is I get lots of use out of it. But sort of my fancy dressy dresses, I don't really have many occasions to go to wear a nice dress. So most of my dresses I wear for Sunday Mass because we're practicing Catholics. And, you know, we've I've always grown up sort of, you know, wearing Sunday best wearing your Sunday best for Sundays um, so I wear it then uh, but apart from that we don't really have any occasions to go to I do have a baptism coming up to be fair so that's quite nice I could wear one of my dresses to that and then obviously Christmas and things um, yeah anyhow <laughs> that's that I sort of go on a tangent sometimes so that's my first one really really love this fabric I got 15% off Liberty they were doing a deal at the time I got 15% off their Tana Lawn which is lovely. The next one I made was again in a Liberty fabric. So this is their flower show, Cosmos flower. Um, and from far away, it looks like this. From up close, it looks like this. Very bright flowers, uh, sort of like a bright blue uh, background with lovely flowers on there. And this isn't a lawn, this is their quilting cotton. So it's slightly thicker slightly warmer feels very bright like a brush texture although i don't believe it is brush but it feels brush to me and obviously as it's a cotton it has more structure so as you can see that sleeve is a lot more poofier and it holds a bit more i mean it's actually quite gorgeous that sleeve i could just take a picture of that sort of kind of looks like a vase or a lampshade <laughs> but there you go exactly the same um style style up bell sleeves added waist ties um, I put a different um, label on that one. This one says uh, made, handmade um, and came together beautifully as well. So this fabric I've had in my stash for a while. Most of it was gifted to me by Dawn um, of Mimi B Fabrics, Mimi and B Fabrics, because I did an interview with her. And to say thank you, she gifted me, I think, £25 voucher or so. So I've had that in my stash, but I did need to buy another chunk of it because um i wanted to make a matching dress for my 16 month old daughter which i have done which i'll show you in a bit and mimi and b were out of this particular um print and i found it at the wool warehouse it was only going for like 356 a meat not a meter 356 a fat quarter so that's 36912 about 13 13 pounds so no 14 pounds something um per meter which is really good so what I've realized now I don't really buy Liberty fabrics because it is quite expensive but their cotton is about 15 to 16 pounds a meter which is similar to Lady McElroy um well similar to Lady McElroy which I think is actually very reasonable for designer fabric and the width of their cottons are 112 to 115 which is what you would normally expect from high-end designer fabrics especially Japanese ones or if they're printed in Japan like Nani Eero is 112 to 115 um, rifle, paper, rifle, rifle Paper Company is 115 width as well so I assume that all of it was you know um, less wide um, but it turns out that the cotton lawn is 140 centimeters wide which i didn't realize so you need less so it's more expensive but you need less um this is 25 pounds a meter but with the 15 percent off it's really really good and i mean i don't buy it that often um so there you go and the only other piece of liberty fabric i've got is a lawn which i bought gosh a good two or three years ago now but i haven't used it yet i've got it over here actually it's a cotton lawn and this was in their sale so it was um i'm not sure how much it was um, but I've got this print here. So this is in their um, Tana Cotton Lawn as well. Don't really know what to do with that yet, but I'll show you up close there. So I've only bought three pieces of um, Liberty Fabrics in my lifetime. Very much enjoying them. I do actually, I am quite liking quilting cottons now because of this, but I think I need to. I don't think um, the puffy sleeves on me are as nice as the cotton lawn i think they are too puffy for me that sounds silly because i'm wearing puffy sleeves at the moment anyway the point that i'm making is if anybody can recommend sort of a similar dress maybe not so poofy or um 
I'm liking the um, Jennifer Lauren handmade Asteria dress. I don't know if I have it here um, because, well, I'm liking it. I have the pattern. I haven't yet made it, but I have um, been looking at fabrics online and I've come across a fabric company called Tilda and they make some beautiful quilted cottons, not quilted cottons, quilting weight cottons, beautiful prints, florals, which I love. And I'm hoping to get some of that, but I don't want to make an indigo anymore. So I'm looking for another go-to pattern where I can use stiffer, more structured cottons and it look nice and not too puffy. Also, because it's autumn winter, these sleeves will not go under a cardigan um, and it'll be very difficult to go under a coat as well, I think. So it'd have to be like a long sleeve or a short sleeve where I can put a cardigan on top. Anyhow, so that's that one. I'll pop up photos of this one. And let me just go through my notes for the indigo. I did the size five with the added um, waist ties. Um, it does come up quite big at the waist, but you need that because there are no fastenings. You have to have enough space to put it over your head. Otherwise, if it's fitted, you won't get you won't be able to get it on. Um, the waist ties I make myself, I do an inch and a half width by 36 inches long times two for each side. And I attach those five eighths from the bottom of the bodice, so then it's got so then the ties won't get caught in the seam allowance. And what else do I do? So I just I did just make a note because um, I was very happy when I realised the cotton lawn which I had just bought um, last month was 140 centimetre width, so I only needed three metres of that. Although I had bought more already, I bought five metres I think because. I wanted to make a matching dress for my seven-year-old daughter, which I haven't got planned yet or made, but that's fabric in my stash. Um, and for the narrower width fabric, the 115 centimetres, you only you need 3.5 metres, so a bit more for, say, for example, for that one. A bit more for that one. So that's that. The other thing that I've made this past two weeks is a matching dress for my daughter. When I say matching, matching in terms of fabric. So I made this little ickle bickle dress. It's not that ickle actually. This is for my 16 month old daughter. And it's, um, it's a bit crease, sorry. It's got a white Peter Pan collar, um, button front all the way at the front. Um, just a, a bodice, gathered skirt all the way around the back. And then lovely long sleeves with the elasticated cuffs, which remind me very much of um, the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra sleeve. And I'll pop up a picture of myself and my daughter with this dress on, both of us together. And the pattern I used for this is the um, Children's Corner Patterns, Ruthie. Children's Corner Patterns. And I went for this version here, but I extended the bodice a bit because it's quite a high empire line. And I just extended the bodice by a couple of inches and everything else was the same. I'll show you the line drawings. So there you go. It's just a, yoke, a back yoke and front yoke, Peter Pan collar, gathers at the sleeves, elasticated cuffs, button down front and then a gathered skirt. And then you've got a short sleeve version as well. Uh, this goes from a size six months all the way up to a size eight years old, which is very, very good. Um, I don't think my seven year old would be able to fit in this, actually, because she is bigger for her age, if that makes sense. But I could measure her and see maybe i'll be able to use it for my other daughter as well level level of difficulty is moderate it's the first time i've used a pattern of theirs i first heard about them from amelia from so amelia because she made a dress for her daughter um which she entered um that dress in for the um selfless so april challenge which she won first place with the children's uh, category and i know that children's corner patterns are mostly known for their smock design so you can actually buy pre-smocked panels that you can buy and add to your dresses or you can buy a pattern that shows you how to actually hand pleat the panel and then hand embroider the the smock design which is really really nice i was almost tempted to go for that but then i didn't in the end and i'm glad that i didn't because that's sort of an extra skill that i don't have the time to to invest in and also um yeah it was a time factor really but i think that's really really pretty as it is i think if i was to do it again i'm just going to make this um 
a tiny bit looser because it does leave quite um it leaves marks on my daughter's um wrists because i think it's a tiny bit too tight but apart from that everything else is the same also it doesn't tell you to interface this at all the button band which normally you would do for adult clothing but because it's fully lined the bodice is fully lined i thought i'd be able to get away with it and um, let me just show you so i've just lined it again with the same fully lined um fully lined it with the same so just the bodice is lined um, but I think next time I will put some interfacing in there just to give it a bit more structure instructions were okay apart from lining the bodice because they do it in a different way than you would normally do it and I think it's because you have a button band that they wanted to enclose within the um within the um bodice as well which sounds doesn't sound like a problem or it doesn't even sound like a thing but it is a thing and once i just had a i just had to think about it and do it slowly and then i was able to figure it out myself and everything else is straightforward so that's the dress that i made for my daughter so very happy with those items um just to say that I have just released my <laughs> september plans so some of most of this stuff is on my september plans video um also it was my birthday the other day as well and Adele and Claire both sent me presents which is so so lovely um because there was a postal strike there was a bit of a delay Adele's is a bit delayed but I have just received Claire's this morning and I did open it I was <laughs> super super excited I did open it and I opened the I opened the card which is lovely it was from herself her husband and her two boys which is so nice and um I, I mean, I think I'm going to get a bit emotional. Like, I mean, I know compared to sort of Ruan and um, what um, Rachel and Tamlin, you know, they've got a beautiful relationship, um, you know, with sewing being the common thing that they have in common. And, you know, they're always gushing about each other and stuff and, and they meet up regularly. Myself, Claire and Adele haven't met up yet. And we do text now and again. We do share, you know, ask for pattern help or fabric help that sort of thing and we comment on each other's instagram posts watch each other's vlogs although i must admit i am so behind in everybody's vlogs i just haven't had the time to watch them and um, but i will catch up on them but anyhow despite that despite the fact that we have never met before i just think it's so lovely that somebody has actually taken the time to spend money on you or to spend time making you something and it's somebody that I've never met before. So anyway, I opened the first present and I was really taken aback. I nearly had like a tear in my eye. And I opened the present. So I opened the present. It was a lovely present, which I'll show you now. And then I opened that and there was something else. There was three little things inside. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to open the rest of it with you. So it just came in a box. Um, just a wooden box. A wooden box. Cardboard box. And inside was, um, it was wrapped in um, very um, economical um just some old uh, tissue paper from patterns let me see what pattern it is should we see what it is it's the simplicity miss oh i don't know what it is but it's s9059 so there you go that's what she doesn't need anymore <laughs> and it was wrapped in some lovely paper i've got a lovely card as well this says happy dancey party cakey presents day and that was lovely and then in this um, lovely package here was a beautiful handmade like makeup bag pouch thing and it's beautiful i mean i don't know what fabric it is but it looks very william morris like um and it's beautiful and it's got sort of the um i don't know what that thing's called so you've got like a, a seam there and then like a a cornered bit there i'm not sure what it's called i've always wanted to make one of these so i've just never had the time or I guess I haven't really wanted to make one that much because if I had really, really wanted to make one, I would have made one. Lovely, beautiful sip. Thank you so much, Claire. I really did feel quite emotional opening this. I just thought, wow, somebody's actually made me something. <laughs> and then you open it and it's fully lined inside with um, a different fabric. Um, let me show you. So inside I've got three other presents. One, two, three. But inside, beautifully lined in sort of a mustard. What is it? Like a palm print um fabric and it's it's all fully enclosed oh it's reversible it's reversible that's even better so you can see the stitch lines even better in this um i don't know if you see the stitch lines there and there so it's a reversible yay okay so the zip isn't reversible because it goes one way but I guess you could use it that way although the way that she has done it that is the most stunning way 
uh, because that fabric is beautiful and you know what I think it is sort of a wash bag or a makeup bag but I don't really want to put my makeup in here because you know sometimes with your makeup sometimes the powder gets loose or your blush gets loose and then you can't it just gets really dirty in there but what I might do is sometimes when I go away um when I go away <laughs> um, I normally have bring little things with me like uh, sewing projects with me like for example if I just need to um, sew up a button or do some hand stitching on something or if I have made a me made dress and I'm going to a wedding or something I always bring thread scissors and needle in case something um pops like a seam pops or a button comes in then so I always have that and I could use that as sort of my little go-to emergency sewing bag so you know you get like sewing kits that are really cheap and not very nice at all like the little tiny ones with all the different threads they're useless I think personally sorry if people do like them um, but I think I could just make my own little sewing kit like have some lovely hand needles a lovely pair of scissors a measuring tape um what else would I need um stuff like that or like even wonder web especially like if you are going to a wedding wonder web you know like that stuff that you get from prim or hemline it's like a like little strips of interfacing that you can iron on hems that's really good for emergencies for men's trousers or anything really that needs a quick hem and i think that's really really lovely so thank you so much claire i'm going on i'm rambling so that is beautiful um and it's quite a large size as well. Thank you. And then inside, I've not opened these yet. I assume they're all sewing related. So I will open them. And I will... Um... Sorry, how long is this video going on for? Lovely. So prim jersey needles. All different variety. This is like an unboxing subscription thing. Um, so that's that. Thank you. And then the next little thing is how nice sally swannell for rendell designs it's a little notepad where did she get this from i don't know but look it's like a vintage scene you've got lovely so a vintage sewing sort of singer type machine there it's basically a vintage showing room a uh, showing room a vintage sewing room and it's little pad uh, uh, is it little pad paper do you know what? If my daughters see this, they are going to beg me for it. But oh no, it isn't. Ah, oh, I thought it was like a little, but it's a little notebook. I thought it was a little pad, a little notebook. There you go. Thank you very much, Claire. And then there's <laughs> yet another thing, another small present here. Um. <laughs> oh god. Ah. Oh, she spent so much. Like goodness me. So this is the Gutterman Creative Thread, eight in a box, 100 metres each, all different colours. Um, I'm not sure what the Gutterman Creative is compared to the normal ones. Oh, it's polyester. Fair enough. Germany. Fair enough. But I'm not sure if anybody knows what it is. I will ask Claire. It's a sew all thread. Oh, I think it's just a normal sew-all thread, but it's packaged nicely. Oh, look at that tin. <gasps> Do you know what? I've been after a tin. So you know how I was saying that I didn't want to use it as a makeup bag because I don't want it to get messy. Having said that now, it is made out of fabric so I could wash it, which is great. But also the reason... I wanted to use it as a little sewing kit bag is because as I say when I go away especially um, if I'm wearing a me made or if I need to finish off a me made I will put um, like scissors and a needle and thread in the little I actually just use a little uh, clip and click Tupperware box plastic container but I have been after a tin that will fit my little scissors and this is perfect like I was looking for tins and I could only find little tiny ones or big ones and there wasn't one like the perfect size so oh, this is so amazing claire this is so amazing. and it's the, i hope my parents don't watch this they're gonna think i'm crazy they already think i'm crazy enough home educating all the children um but it's a beautiful tin vintage tin and this is perfect because it fits let me just get what i put in it i'm gonna end up falling so I normally put, I normally bring my little swan, I don't know what these are called, swan scissors, stalk, stalk scissors, 
um, and uh, my prim needle thingy bobby um, and um, like thread and buttons and that fits perfectly in there so thank you so much Claire that was really quite uncanny because I've never mentioned that to anybody uh obviously there's threads in there which I will take out they're all very good quality threads thank you so much Claire I'm so so like overwhelmed by that and um well I can't say thank you enough so thank you very much Claire <laughs> that's very very kind of you Hello everyone, so just thought I would add this um, little bit to my Friday Sews vlog. So as I said, it was my birthday a couple of days ago and my good friends, um, Sewing Buddies Claire, um, got me a lovely present which I have already videoed in the vlog. Um, and now Adele, Sew for Serenity, has, her present has arrived. And I've just looked at the box and it says, um, Fox Glove and Field. Now I know who they are and I was basically talking to Adele and um, Claire on our WhatsApp group and I was just saying how, um, you know, what sort of pattern weights. Oh, I think there was an Instagram post with Oh So Quaint and they do the um, the resin or the biscuit, um, biscuit paper weights, biscuit pattern weights. And I think uh, Claire and Adele tagged me on. They've got a giveaway going on. Anywho, I basically said I've got these paper weights because um, pattern weights. Because a couple of years ago, um, I, I bought them from Oso oh Quaint myself, I believe. And then they kind of took a rest from their business and now they're presumably back up and running again. So anyway, I basically said, oh, they were a bit too small for me and they weren't heavy enough. Um, but I was thinking about the Liberty printed um, Fox Glove and Field paperweights. So I don't know if that this is what it is, but um, it is from Fox Glove and Field. And I did speak to, I was speaking to Adele and Claire about it. So I don't really know. But um, so I've just opened the box. And there's a lovely card on here. To Crystal, happy birthday to a wonderful friend and very talented sewist. Hope you get lots of sewing gifts and have an amazing day. Lots of love. Adele, John, Alice, Lillian, Isabel and Teddy. So that's... Uh, so I was wondering, who's Teddy? It's their little doggy. Oh, that's so sweet. And it's a uh, Victorian Albert print um, card there. Lots of tissue paper. Uh, not tissue paper. Bubble wrap here. <laughs> And I think it is what I was just talking about because it feels really heavy. Uh, lovely wrapping there. So I assume Fox Glove and Field do do the wrapping because I think this was direct from them as opposed to going via Adele herself. I'm just It feels very heavy. So I do think I know what it is. Um, although if it isn't, I'll be very embarrassed. Um, and it is. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Look at that box set. I've been looking at these um, from afar for a while. I've seen them advertised and I have even gone onto the shop to sort of pick which prints I would get if I was to buy them myself. But they are really expensive and um, I'm going to open them now. I haven't opened them yet, but... Ah! Oh, look at these. Wow. Uh, they're amazing. So they are Liberty print ones. They're quite heavy. So I've got this lovely Liberty print. 290 grams each made in made in where Lincolnshire my eyesight's very bad and then they've got their um thing on the end there their little logo sticker I mean how beautiful is that and they're actually really heavy I would say like um a tin a tin of a tin of beans how much are a tin of beans is that 250 grams uh, a tin of beans but in like a smaller in a smaller um um quantity in a smaller size as it were so that's the first one the second one is this lovely print i believe it's liberty i'm not sure i know they do other other prints but there it, it is liberty it's liberty that i've not seen the prints i've not seen and this one's a beautiful one i mean look at those that is so so lovely uh, thank you so much Adele that's Adele from Sofa Serenity and it's quite sweet and thoughtful because we were literally just talking about this last week and I was thinking about getting them and they are lovely so as I say with my other weights they they are very small and not heavy enough but these are small um, but they are very very heavy so that would work uh, really really nicely for my pattern weights um, and just to say Adele thank you so much Claire as well thank you so much it's very thoughtful 
of both of you. And I know at the moment cost of living is rising. Uh, so please don't make this an annual thing, you know, just maybe like a token if you really want to, like a token small thing, because I now have to um, try and live up to all these wonderful presents. Um, I think Claire's birthday is coming up next month and then the month after that October and then the month after that is is um Adele's um Adele's birthday um as I say Adele and I and Claire and I or Claire and Adele neither of us have met each other but we are going to see each other for the first time at the knitting and stitching show uh at Alexandria Palace Alexandra Palace Alexandria Palace in London so really looking forward to that I think it's the first week of October so really really looking forward to that thank you so much Adele these are lovely and um I will be using them straight away thank you so much take care everyone bye bye for my birthday yes I just requested so the children were like oh it's your birthday mum what would you like my husband's the same what would you like and honestly I have everything like I don't want to sound like what's the word like arrogant or anything obviously I don't have like a room full of money or all the gold anyway I have everything that I need or want I could have fabric which is fair enough um so I did actually ask for some fabric to be fair for my husband I'll pop up a picture of the fabric that I have ordered but it hasn't yet arrived so this is a pre-quilted denim and teddy shearling bonded fabric together and um, it's a lovely coating fabric from Fabric Godmother. And I am planning to make the Grainline Studio Tamarack jacket. I'll pop up a photo on there. And the reason I went for that is because it is a double face, quite thick fabric. Um, you can't really have collars or anything because it is quite a thick fabric. You can't have fabric on fabric because it would just be, I don't even know if a needle could go through that. So the Tamarack jacket is... Um, very straightforward front and front two front pieces, back piece and sleeves. And then it's all bias bound all the way around the neckline, all the way down the front. It has got pockets. Um, they're actually welt pockets, which I don't think I'll be able to make in my fabric unless I use different fabric um, because sort of that welt bit, I might be able to do it in like a navy or something. But otherwise I might just do some patch pockets on the front or just like some hand pockets. Again, the Tilly and the Buttons pockets, but I won't use that fabric as the pockets because they'll be too thick. I'll just be using like a thick, like a twill cotton or something that I have in my stash. Um, and yes, so I have bought the jacket and I'm going to make it, I'm going to lengthen it. So I love sort of the curved bottom of the jacket, but I'm going to lengthen it to just below my bum area. So it's quite a nice warm sort of day coat, uh, which I like. Uh, so where we live at the moment, we live in a Victorian house and the rooms are really, really big. The ceilings are really, really high and it's actually quite cold. So to heat the house takes a lot of money basically and with the cost of living going up you know we can't afford to heat the whole house all the time because the house is, is really big as I say the rooms are really big the ceilings are really high and half of the house downstairs is open plan and the other half are other two reception rooms that we have and um, but anyway we mainly spend most of our time in the open plan area which is sort of the kitchen dining room kitchen dining room living room and to heat that place up basically the heat just goes all the way up to the to the top of the house because there's no doors to keep it all in. So anyway, having said all that, I am planning to make a coat, um, like a day coat that I can wear obviously outside, but inside as well. Also with the children and the garden, they're coming in and out of the garden. We've got several doors going out to the outside of the property. And with all the children running around, sometimes the door gets left open. I'm running in and out of the house. So anyway, this is a lovely coat, I think, that I can wear as what I'm now going to call my house coat. Um, so that's that and it, it looks quite simple as I say it's just two front pieces a back piece and sleeves uh, and then bias binding all the way through and then for the seams inside I think I'm going to bias bind that as well um, so that's what my husband gifted me also Adele um, Claire and I are going to the knitting and stitching show um, and I have also been given um, some lovely um, um, funds to spend at that show uh, for my birthday so that's very very nice thank you very much um, last thing I want to talk about was a bit of a fabric stash, fabric haul, um, and I'll show you what I bought. This was bought a month ago now, but I just haven't had time to show it off yet. So this was the Lush Cloth Sale. Um, the first, one of the parts of the Lush, um, so the other, um, 
one of the fabrics that I bought from Lush Cloth is that one which I've shown you already. Um, this is the um, Hydrangea Print Rifle Paper Company. Sorry, this is already cut out as an indigo dress. Hydrangea Print um, from Rifle Paper Company from Lush Cloth. I bought three meters of that. I also bought, oh, I've got this thing here. I also bought some uh, ink stain nude viscose twill. This colorway, it looks kind of nudey, but it is pink, like a lovely pink color uh, with sort of black splashes. Viscose twill, so viscose with the, means lovely drape, obviously. And then the twill texture, I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure if that's coming up, but there is a twill texture there. Let me just see. There you go. So I've got three meters of that. This will probably be left now for spring summer makes because it's not really autumn winter. And the next thing that I bought was cotton jersey in their pink or rose colorway. So it's this here. It's coming a bit brownier, so it's more rosy, dusky pink, which I love that colourway. I have got this in... Do I have it up here? Uh, yes, I do. I've got some remnants of it. I'm going to fall over. I have got it in that sort of rust colourway, which I've made a Tabitha t-shirt for my eldest daughter and a Tabitha drawstring dress for my second daughter. Yeah, second daughter. And I love that because um, I just love that fabric and I love rose pink. So I thought I'd buy this. Not sure what's planned for that yet. The next thing I bought was some um, viscose in a green viscose polka dot. Three meters of this as well. I'm quite liking green, actually. I mean, to be fair, I thought this green would be not as dark as this. Um, but, you know, it's fine. So lovely viscose there green polka dots and then the last thing I bought from Lush Cloth was this what is it called it's like a um knitted jacquard organic leaf jacquard in a sienna which is like a burnt burnt rust color burnt orange rust color so that is that is the true color there but if I go up close can you see that it's like a leaf knitted pattern which is really nice and really different and I was planning to make um the Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress or the obviously the Tabitha t-shirt dress but the long sleeve version because I have enough it doesn't actually say how many I've got here um so I've got enough so if anybody has any ideas of what to make with, with this or the sew over it Georgie dress would work nicely sew over it Heather dress which I haven't made for a while so that's that and it was actually really beautifully packaged you know um it's a box with tissue paper but when i opened the box um everything was like i'll show you it was kind of i can't really i will try and replicate it it was kind of like obviously i had the other fabric that i've already cut out as well i kind of arranged it so that you could see all the fabrics like folded equally so there's like four different fabrics in there and when you opened it you saw saw them all at once so i thought that was a different way of packaging things and it's nice to open it and just kind of be surprised uh, by what you got because sometimes you forget what you buy and then from pound fabrics i um maybe i'll share that in another vlog because this is like 39 minutes and it's only a friday socks socks friday vlogs friday sews vlog i will share my pan fabrics haul at my next friday sews i believe um and that's all i can smell cooking i think the children are cooking downstairs oh no i'm making a beef pie for dinner and i normally use my slow cooker or my instant pot to um cook the meat soften the meat with mushrooms and vegetables and then i transfer that to an oven dish and then i add pastry and i put it in the oven so that's probably what I'm smelling at the moment. Um, and that's everything that I've got to speak to you about. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry that was a long one. Um, for those of you that I've said this already, I think, please subscribe and like if you can. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. And I will hopefully see you again next time. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.